and welcome back to the Counterpoint Podcast. I'm your host, Maurice, and today we have a really exciting topic. I want to be talking about the refurb market, or what people also call the secondhand smartphone market. And with that, I have two of my colleagues with me, Jeff Fieldhack and Glenn Cardoza. How are you guys? How's it going? Hello, Maurice. All good. Hey, Maurice. Well, glad to have you guys back to talk about this. I know we've done some podcasts in the past about this, but we've just come out with the latest report on the refurb market. So we, we're looking into 2021, really, and what this refurb smartphone market has been going. I believe sales increased 15% year over year. There's a lot of growth coming for a lot of key regions and certain countries, such as India. And Latin America, especially also just as a region as a whole, has been showing a lot of growth. So a lot of interesting things to pick out here, and I really want to dive in and um, kind of get your guys' insights on this. So to start off, let's let's go with Glenn. Why don't you t- tell us a little bit on the refurb market and how it performed in 2021, and what were some of the key takeaways that we've like shown in this report? So the refurb industry has gone through a lot of changes in 2021. There's a lot of the supply and demand aspects. We've seen a lot of difference in that. We've seen an increase in supply, which was pending right from 2020 because of COVID and, uh, you know, continuous resurgences. The market was not exactly performing at its, its peak. So once the COVID effects started reducing, there was a lot of inventory that was available in the markets. The awareness increased as well. The entire refurb industry for smartphones, it matured quite a bit in 2021 as the awareness grew, as the new players came up in the market and current players started strengthening their position in the market. So this, again, was complemented by the government initiatives in many countries and uh, industry bodies taking notice of how the secondary market can do much better when it comes to supplies and the entire sustainability aspect. Online channels, this is one more point that has worked for the secondary market. So that has really helped in people getting to know a lot more, being aware, and in many cases, choosing secondary market smartphones for their next usage. Yeah, so one one thing I just wanted to ask on that. So you said... Supply increase. So is that just because there are more trading programs happening or, or what's driven that increase in supply? Exactly, Mari. So there's a lot of trains that have happened over last year, much more as compared to any of the previous years. OEMs, Arifa players, and many other such players in the market have taken as much benefit out of trading programs as they could. Many of the offers, schemes, discounts online were related with trade-in offers. Let's not forget the entire supply was also driven by the demand because of the work from home, study from home, and now currently hybrid models of working and studying. So even while people started getting in touch and realized how important it was to stay connected, uh, even people trying to switch from feature phones to smartphones would consider owning a pre-owned smartphone. So that has all helped in this, this entire growth in the industry. Right. That's, I think, a really good summary in terms of where we are in the market and a couple of the drivers, especially Refurb really picked up because also we had a shortage of new devices, right? So people were really trying to just get any type of smartphone they could in order for them to be connected during these times. But but Jeff, so moving on, I, I know that there are some other factors that contributed to this growth. Can you highlight some of the other ones um, that we haven't touched upon yet? Yeah, for sure. I guess in 2021, one of the major factors was these trade-in platforms. A lot of startup money, growth outside of France into other EU countries and into the US. A lot of money and marketing thrown used devices. So I think this really helped the the secondary market. I think Glenn hit it uh, on the head also on, you know, it's the biggest funnel for the secondary market is the new market and new device sales in 2019, you know, were very strong 2020 COVID down significantly. And then they rebounded globally 7% in the U S 14%. So I think the biggest funnel for the secondary market is always the new market size of mature markets. They're handing in old devices. And what we saw in Europe and the U S are carriers offering these incentives to get consumers to upgrade to 5G 
by offering overpaying for used devices. In the US, any device $25 or more, you get thrown, you know, $700 to $1,000 for, for a new flagship. So, of course, that really helped the secondary market supply. And in the past, these um, promotions would go away. You know, they were only holiday, Black Friday, dads and grads. And now they pretty much last, you know, they just uh, don't really go away. Maybe they're slightly reduced, but they're on more than off. Let's move on to something that's, I think, been on our minds here with all this, you know, geopolitics that's happening, brands trying to reduce dependencies on China. We've not just seen it with the new smartphone market where you know, OEMs are trying to move away manufacturing from China and diversifying in other countries. But what's happening in the refurb market there? So what are the key players doing to ensure low-cost operations? Yeah, I think it started even pre-COVID. As China became a bit more expensive for manufacturing, OEMs were looking to diversify manufacturing in Vietnam, India, Philippines, But then it's kind of turned to just not only manufacturing, it is components and the component supply chain diversification. So that's that's really happened too. The other, I think, major point specific to the secondary market is China is not the huge channel uh, absorbing secondary market devices like it was five years ago. And I think there's a, a few reasons for it. The China ports, mainly due to Some of the friction with the United States are more scrutinized today, and this means higher costs, tariffs for secondary market players. Also, all through COVID, and even, you know, today with the resurgence of COVID in Asia and China, there's limited travel between Hong Kong and Shenzhen, which was the big thoroughfare for getting devices into Shenzhen for repair and then shotgun through the world. So again, getting through the tariffs has made costs higher. And then just the cost of components have gotten higher in Hong Kong. So I think all OEMs and secondary market players have attempted to reduce their dependency on uh, China because it just does not absorb as many devices as it has, let's say, five years ago. Now, coming back to you, Glenn, um, let's take a deeper look into who the leading OEMs are in the reefer market. You know, is it the same compared to the new smartphone market or is it like, can you tell us a little bit more about that? And where do you see different brand shares across the globe? Is, Is it similar or do certain regions have preferences? Absolutely. So Apple, as you mentioned, is the front runner among all the OEMs. Apple knows this and everyone in the market, the main players in all the supply chains across regions are well aware of this. Consumer demand is highest, aspirational value being the highest for for Apple iPhones. Apple's been a leader in, in the market, in the secondary market for years now. And that seems to be continuing. It is actually interesting to notice how Apple share keeps changing. This is happening also because there are preferences in some regions for Android devices. There are some preferences with regards to a change in aspiration. So Apple iPhone iOS is not the only aspirational brand out there for different regions. So for the US in the EU and other mature market, Apple still is the highest. And we also see other regions where there are other brands coming up. Samsung has always been a distant second, but its flagships still have one of the highest values in the secondary market. But of course, uh, Apple is is one of those brands, the only brand actually that can sustain its value the most in the secondary market. Yeah, it's always interesting seeing Apple being mentioned as an aspirational brand. It's a lower barrier to entry for many consumers who can't buy the, the latest and greatest of Apple. So they go to the refurb market and that's how Apple can acquire uh, new users for iOS. Exactly, yeah. Now, Again, moving back to you, Jeff, is there any type of insight on this right to repair movement or increase in repair that's especially happening in the US and the EU? And do you have any type of data on which components are the ones that um, need the most repair? Is it really displays or is it batteries? What, What can you tell us about that? Sure. Yeah, the right to repair, starting with the U.S., that's gaining a lot of steam. There are now 16 states that have laws on the books that OEMs must contribute parts to repair uh, and repair shops. Um, 
got to read the fine line, lots of details, uh, getting certification, but at least it's happening and helping the secondary market and giving um, consumers better options that are lower cost for repair. There are actually only eight states with nothing planned and nothing on the books, but likely this is going the way of other states where um, uh, trying to help consumers and lower costs. On the EU side, yeah, they're actually much ahead of the U.S., lots of different laws in place, and they're actually trying to even handset OEMs to uh, make devices more easy to repair. They're giving them like ratings on how easy is this device to repair? How often do they support or for how long do they support software upgrades, for example? So I think it's happening. It really moves slowly, but at least it's going in the right direction. As far as repairs, it's still the top ones are display replacements, uh, battery, camera, and then charging ports. And I guess the only changes here are cameras actually moving up in repairs. Now that uh, cameras are so important for devices, and now we're moving to double, triple, quad camera modules, that repair seems to be in higher numbers. But it's those four things that are repaired the most. One, one th other thing I will add about repair is with the higher uh, percentage of OLED displays, versus LCDs, it is actually making repair more difficult. OLEDs are expensive, many layers, very complicated. Sometimes they have, you know, within the, the layers, other components. It's built as a module or these curved or 2.5 angle displays make repair harder. So it's a bit of a give and take. Now that we're moving to more OLEDs, they are more difficult, more expensive to repair. But I think as we get these right to repair laws and more options for consumers, even OLED re replacements will come down in price. That's really interesting, but I think I wanted to follow up on one thing. Do you think that if these right to repair movements come to fruition, will we see different models for different regions? You know, ones that can be repaired, one one's not, or do you think OEMs will make one universal model? I think OEMs will have to make one universal model. They just having another yeah, factory line, I think it would be too expensive. However, what we are seeing is a change where in the U.S., very, very high percentage of original parts are used, whereas in China, it's the opposite. It's very small percentage of the original parts being used, and it's uh, replacement parts that are a fraction of the cost. And I think what would be best for the market is if there's some sort of middle ground there where that would really drive more competition in the secondary market parts uh, area to where we could see some yeah better costs for even repair players in the U.S. that maybe have very high costs with original parts or are getting certification to make uh, repairs. So I think it will take some time, but eventually over the next five years, the cost should come down considerably, which will help the secondary market. Nice. That actually brings up um, another thing I want to touch on. We've seen stuff related to like eco ratings or sustainability initiatives from brands. If you follow any of the new Samsung announcements or Apple announcements, all of them have this focus on sustainability. And recently, Samsung announced that it will sell spare parts to make repairs easier. So for the S20 series, S21 series, and in particular for the US market. So do you see more brands adopting this type of strategy for their key models or is, you know, is Samsung just kind of, you know, being a, a one-off here? So yes, eco rating is uh, one of those initiatives that have been uh, long awaited and it's one of the few overdue aspects of the circular economy, which has mainly started in, in countries like France, where at this point they already have a good synergy alliances between telecom operators, the government bodies, consumer bodies, and OEMs as well. Even OEMs feel the need that they need to join up and ally themselves with these movements because they will, you know, in a manner dictate how production, sourcing, usage, and even post-usage stages for, for these devices uh, will go on in the future. So eco rating is something is, is currently happening in matured markets, but it is spreading its wings across 
markets like even LATAM right now. Sustainability is that one umbrella that it's getting repair, eco rating, all brand related initiatives under this particular umbrella. And right now, Apple and Samsung, two big contenders in this space. Apple is making sure that it's advertised at all the aspects with regards to right from sourcing all the way to usage and post usage. There is some or the other initiative which which supports sustainability. All the other brands are as well at this point trying to showcase this. And that is something that will change the industry, maybe not immediately, but we see a certain standardization that might come in the coming years as a result of these initiatives. Yeah, I agree with Glenn. Um, These eco ratings are important, but I think they will take uh, a lot of time because in the end, the OEMs, they want to make thinner, more elegant, more durable, better devices. And if that means making uh, a lot of the key components a module that are harder for repair or harder for sustainability, a circular economy, that's the afterthought for them. Their first thought is we have to drive sales. And the other kind of conflicting segment here for the OEMs are they don't want consumers to hold on to their devices four to six years or and then you know two more years in the secondary market they want to really drive upgrades so uh, they're just doing their best to add features and you know create devices that will really promote upgrades which really isn't terrible for the secondary market but it conflicts a little bit with you know eco ratings and and sustainability nice those are some really interesting comments on that and and you know before we wrap up, we've talked a little bit about what, what will happen in the future, but let's just have one last final thing on, you know, which regions or which countries you think uh, will be poised for growth in the coming years, particularly for the refurb market. And if you have any, you know, last comments or recommendations uh, for OEMs that you've like seen, you know, doing doing this research and really digging into this topic, yeah, please go ahead. In, in the coming years, we see some of the regions which are still developing. There are certain markets out there that are still maturing. So two of them would be India and Latin America. These two have a, a high promise in the secondary market. It's, it's not only for smartphones, it's for other related devices as well in the ecosystem. Uh, so we've seen a lot of pent-up demand show up in a very positive manner in these markets in, in the last one year's time itself. And many of these markets in India, LATAM, Southeast Asia, uh, Africa as well, to a certain extent, they have a a big proportion of unorganized sector. And uh, one thing that is dynamic is the addition of new entrants into the ecosystem of these countries so that the new players come in and helps the unorganized sector's volumes become more transparent in the value chain. So we see a lot of growth coming out of these regions in the coming years. Yeah, I'll just add two areas that I see ready for growth. Japan, one, there are government initiatives to bring the cost down of both service and equipment. And in Japan's unique in that the carriers do not buy spectrum for billions of dollars like they do in a lot of other regions. So the government has a little more force behind them by trying to get costs down. And there are also movements by MVNOs in Japan, and I think just a lot of awareness around the secondary market. So one, I look for Japan's uh, secondary market to grow. Latin America, we've been talking about Latin America for a long time, but they love flagships there. It's just, you know, for the bulk of consumers, you know, $1,000 device is too expensive. So enter secondary market flagships that come in at a lot lower uh, price point. I think Latin America is an area that's ripe for a lot of growth in the secondary market. And Maurice, you mentioned brands. I think following what Apple, Google, Samsung have done partnering with repair, I think that's important for other OEMs, making repair more available, more access better costs that they don't have to mail in devices back to the manufacturer and be without a device for two, three, five days. I think um, that is a competitive advantage for Apple, Samsung, and Google. 
And I think other OEMs have to partner and do the same and also offer software upgrades uh, for a longer period of time as a device flows into the secondary market. Both very important for OEMs to be successful in the secondary market. Well, thank you, guys. That was great. I really appreciated those insights, and I'm sure your listeners did as well. Thanks for being on the show once again. Thank you, Maurice. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And for everyone listening, this, of course, will be up on counterpointresearch.com under our podcast section. But you can also find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, and Google Podcasts. Make sure to listen, comment, uh, and subscribe. Thanks a lot. And until next time, take care. Bye.